What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Duality Podcast, where our motto is living comfortably uncomfortable. My name is Ian Perez, joined by Jonathan Mercado, Victor Rivera, and Chris Sora. We're four ordinary dudes with extraordinary dreams. What's up, Jonathan? What's up, everyone? And thank you guys for tuning in to another episode, guys, where we grow from the inside out, we turn our dreams into reality, and we stop all the wishing, and we start all the doing. Now, check this out. We want to give thanks once again for tuning in. Um, we want shout, quick shout out to Ian, guys. He did something very magical, and he somehow t- uh, increased our views by like 200%. And so if you are not on YouTube Reels, or if you're on, not on YouTube, go to YouTube, guys. Watch our Reels. It's a phenomenal job. Ian is Shorts. working on the business, which is something <laughs> we're going to be talking about today. Ian is focused on growing so the topic at hand today, before we get into any kind of juiciness, the topic at hand is working on your business versus working in your business. Which one should you be doing? What are we even talking about? And knowing the difference can literally impact your future life, guys. It could literally 10x everything that you're doing if you know the difference and being super intentional on how you're using, utilizing your time. Now, I think the episode name is going to be, I forgot what the episode name is. Did y'all look at the email or not? Oh, here it is. I have it in my notes. It's give yourself a promotion, guys. That is today's episode name is give yourself the promotion because you have the ability to do it right after this episode. So stay tuned for all that goodness. And before we jump into it, we need to go to the arena of fire where we hold each other accountable and we find out, are we doing the things we said we're going to do? You know, when the feeling is no longer there, we started off with Mr. Ian. Uh, yeah, I worked out twice last week. Uh, then I balled up on Jonathan. Bro, stop. <laughs> no, Ian <laughs> murdered me the first two games. I was all like, I was trying. I was really trying. And he was just making all the shots. I was like, give it to you. At first, I always like, give it to people, right? I'm like, you ain't going to make the three. And then. Nine times out of 10, I'll give it to you again because chances are you're not going to make it again. He made it again. And then he'll, nah, every shot he threw up, it was going in. I was like, yo, he was, it was like seven, one. He had seven, I had one. I'm like, oh, I'm going to come back, right? Ian's going to, this is not Ian. Who is this guy? <laughs> Bro, he took the dub and uh-huh. I was all like, oh, bet, running back. We'll do our three spots. He took the dub again. I was <laughs> like, going on the third one, the last one. So I took the dub on that one. I was like, Ian's getting fatigued. Thoughts no longer coming in. And I started playing my game, which is the mental game. I started talking shit, bro. It wasn't mental. even that. that that's, it was, I, was I won the best two out of three. He won the first game. I won two games, two and three. And at the end of that, I'm like, all right, it's two or three. We're over. We're done with, right? He's like, no, let's run it back. Now, this dude knows, this L, dude knows that at, at that <laughs> point, my gas is like my tank is empty. I'm gassed. So we just go and I'm just I'm just throwing stuff. He got low key game. Like he'll be on. He, we get on fire. He gets on fire. I think he like it was one game, too. It was me, you and then someone. Else. I think we're Chris or someone else is there. And uh, Ian was on fire, too, man. He'd be like sometimes he'd be going on. Yeah, going spurts. yeah I need to get the stamina <laughs> up. We we did play the pros version one on one with three dribble, three, three dribble dribbles. limit. So, which was pretty different. That was my first time. I hate doing three dribble limit because, you know, I like to fucking spam the shit out of somebody. But, uh, yeah, so yeah. I took I took an L. I mean, I took a, a, a W, so it was a 2-1. And then I was like, no, bro, I got it. let's just run it back one more time. Then I took the, the W again, and then I was like, hey, bro, we can't go on a tie. So I asked him, you want to end it here? He's like, no, we can't. We can't go on a tie. And so I took the last one. So I ended up at the end of the day, I gave even it to him. though he had, he took the first initial like overall W, but I I sold him into more games so that way I can walk away with my W. <laughs> I won the first set of best two out of three, and he won the second set. We we'll split it Which, that way. <laughs> Ian's never beat me before, so for him to like get me twice, I was like, oh, and I was doing pretty good, right? And like everything was still good, but he was just. Yeah, but it was just hitting. I was going in the paint, bullying him a little bit. But it was fun. It was good. Um, workout, yes. Book, I'm off and on. I'm almost done. Um, yeah, that's about it. Let's go, brother. What's up, Chris? Yeah, I also worked out, like, I think, twice last week. Um, started reading the new book. Uh, 
What is it? Yeah, no, uh, it's uh, better small talk. Just like I just. <clears throat> Yeah, you need that. There's something that, yeah, I, I need to work on my, I mean, I do, like, I I mean, I, I can talk to people, but sometimes uh, I struggle with that, so I'm working on it. I just gave my son the speech of learning how to do small talk. I gave him an objective. I said, son, because my son's like, he's conservative. He's just uh, like, hey, if you talk to him, he'll, he'll talk a little bit, but he's just conservative. So I gave him uh, a goal. I was like, hey, this week, I need you to start a conversation with one of the coaches and so I gave him like a little tip. I was like, find the common ground, like just analyze them, see how they move. I was like, if the dude looks like he can ball, just ask him, hey man, where you play ball at? Or if I think one of the coaches looked like he was like a, a receiver, like he's real fit, he's agility on point. Just hey, just like start the conversation, like start a conversation, find a common ground, and then continue to work from there. And the first week, first, first week, he failed all, all four days, all five days. <laughs> and so I, it's time to re-up on the speech because it's, just, it's super important. As you know, self-development, learning how to talk to people, connect, network, it's its massive. It's not what you know, it's who you know, ultimately. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I think I'm pretty, uh, I think I suck at small talk too. I think it depends on how I feel. If I don't want to talk to anyone, I'm probably not going to talk to anyone. I think that comes from being a CG trainer. <laughs> And then you, can turn you it think on so? And off. You can turn <laughs> yeah. it on and off because ideally, I don't like talking to fucking people. But then when I turn my like when I turn the social aspect, Jonathan, on like I need to interact with people to help people like each other. Yeah. Then a different Jonathan comes out, right? That's it's, how it was for me too when I was coaching track at my high school. Uh, it's just different when you when you have to do it, I guess, than doing it like just on your own, like and then, like where it's not like a natural conversation yeah. fell into bullshit like really easy i like that's most com- what conversations are just bullshitting they just talk yeah. picking yeah, up a topic yeah. and just kind of spitting Ian's off the good. i get though i do uh, Ian in different arenas and he's shooting the shit yeah so i don't like it. talking to people but i can <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can't tell but you do a fucking phenomenal job so you got big what else you been doing brother man so i did work out last week it was good um and then i got I gotta get back to running running i've been slacking on running i used to be good uh consistent at it and i stopped i gotta get i don't want it and it's been hectic though it's been like it's been a lot going on but um uh and shoot i'm i'm starting wrong slacking with the book so i had like oh i gotta go to uh the bookstore get that book i said well, from the rock i didn't get around to it so I got, I'm going to go get on it this week and uh, start reading a book. Even if I don't find the Rocks book, I'm determined to go to the bookstore and just get a book. <laughs> that's, uh, that intrigues let's my... Let's hold uh, this full committed to that. Let's let's give him... Someone text Thursday. me. Thursday. <laughs> text Actually, me Friday. <laughs> we'll give you Friday. We'll give you at the end of the day Friday. And let's, let's hold him to that, guys. But I have a fucking book by Friday. <laughs> I need it. I need to get back to reading. Well, I actually miss it. No, it's good. It's good. I know, right? When you're in the when you're in the flow, it feels amazing. Like the rhythm, like learning, yeah. all that. Of course, it depends on the book. Well, I got great news. I can finally say I finished that fucking book. Um, crushing like a monk, it, crushing right? it. No, crushing no. it, crushing it, crushing it. Yeah, by Gary oh. V. It's the second oh, okay. version when I should have read the first version. Oh, right. Now, hey, even though I didn't like it, and I really didn't grab anything out of it. If you don't like. Don't take my perspective on it. That's my perspective. That's who I am in my season in my life right now. And maybe that book could have helped me out like early on in, in my development. But this one for me in this current me version, it, it didn't do me any justice, which is why it was very difficult to finish. But I finally got out the way. I just, hey, I told you I had like two hours left. <sighs> Knocked it out in three cardio sessions. And I caught it a wrap, brother. I was like, all right, Gary V, still fucking love you. You're still goat, brother. But um. I have to read another book. So leadership is actually sending me another book for that presentation coming in October 22nd. And so I'm going to find out what book, well, they're not telling us what book it is. I have to wait to receive it in the, in the mail. And I'm going to buy the audible and crush it and start my presentation. Cause they gave me the <laughs> like, I'm going to get the audible. <laughs> so Bro, get the <laughs> everyone learns different. Right. So I, I get a little frustrated when I tell people I'm doing 75 hard and I tell them cupcake version. Right. And then yeah. it's an ego thing, like, oh, you're not doing the real thing. So fucking what? Like, did you not learn anything from 75 hard? You're supposed to self-develop, be kind, right? Want people to win, whether doing the half version, cupcake version, or the full version. Like, yeah, you need to redo 75 hard if you're acting egotistic that I'm not doing the real thing. 
And if you want to be egotistic, bro, 10 pages a day, what is that, like 10 minutes? I'm doing 45, 30 minutes a day, homie. Ste- like cupcake version, step up. Where that's are my like, cupcakes at? Step yeah. up, bro. <laughs> that's like the only knock I get from people that are uh, doing this. They get like really uh, – like mean to other folks. Yeah, yeah, to others, bro. <laughs> like the whole point of 75 yeah. hard is life transformation, bro. Like, did you not get that? <laughs> like, I think it's probably because they're miserable doing the 75 hard. <laughs> like, I was like, ain't supposed to like develop your kind, like, yeah, yeah kindness and be like nice to other people. Bro, <laughs> anyways, yeah. I got a little fuss. I actually posted about 75 hard today. And oh, I didn't is, see it, it. is it good or is it bad? And you know, oh, okay. you know, it depends, right? Because you go on some websites that 75 hard, it's terrible, don't do it. And then you go on 75 hard, different websites, like, oh, it's the freaking best. And the answer is always in the middle. It depends on the season of your life. Are yeah. you somebody who depends can- what you need, yeah. Yeah, are you somebody who already has some great habits in mind? Then yeah, you probably are going to have a better chance at doing 75 hard because you already built some habits versus you're someone that knows you can't even freaking do one habit and then you want to do five habits. Like that's almost insanity, brother. Now, granted, some people might, you know, there's those, uh, there's those freaking outliers that can rise to the occasion, but it's slim to none. Right. So both, I see both sides. I see it depends on the version you are today, if you're going to be successful or not. And that's self-awareness. But anyway, can you, can you explain what 75 hard is for the listeners? Yeah. So is there like a 37 hard, and a half hard? Cause 75 is like really far. Yeah. 75 hard <laughs> is 75 days of doing five habits daily, every single day. And if you miss a day, you have to start over. So it's working out as having two 45 minute workouts, one indoor, one outdoor. It's reading 10 pages a day. It's drinking one gallon of water a day. It's following a fitness. It's following a nutrition plan, whatever nutrition plan you need to, you need to follow it to the T, no cheat meals. And then it's uh, the last one is take a progress picture every day. Right. And so for me, I've been doing 75 hard for the longest without even calling it 75 hard, except you know, I drink alcohol. So that was like the only real part of that I have to tweak to do 75 hard, which is probably the hardest because, you know, I believe in flexible dieting. I believe in if you could fit a little bit of that goodness, then and you still hit your goals, hit your macros, you're totally fine. But I'm also doing it because I want to support my wife, right? So there's more meaningful behind it is like Desi needs a support system, accountability. You know, anybody who's into any kind of goals related, you got to have support systems and you got to have backup systems. And so I'm a support system for my wife. And plus, let me just knock it out so I can just do like another thing off my checklist, like boom. So that's what 75 hard is, guys. And I just gave you a couple of reasons why you shouldn't or should do it. Just depends on your season. But hey, enough of all that. You can decide on your own. Go and listen to Andy Friskilla or whatever his last name is. I want to talk about a fun topic. So if you want to fast forward it, maybe five minutes, fast forward it, because I almost got murdered. Some real life horror movie type murder like some um the serial killer like not even serial killer bro like uh anime animaville horror like uh let's see demon type shit brother dang what's going Yo, on you got possessed or what no, bro. That's got Dude, or take what? this out so we're me and my wife are doing 75 hard so on sunday night we're going for a walk with the kids the dog everything we're taking a different route we're going the opposite direction around the block we're walking i see an old ass lady to lock eyes with me and she's pushing this big ass fucking trash can down a driveway that slanted now granted this old lady's like picture perfect horror film horror lady hunchback <laughs> 92 years old has a screechy voice and you know she looks terrifying brother and i'm like let me go help her out babe and so i help her out i'm like hey like you should not be doing this bro she was struggling so i'm like i'm blessed that i like came across her to help her out so i put the trash can in and i was like hey it's also recycled day you want me to get that she's like yes and so i was like perfect i got i got the other trash can out and she's stuck in the middle of the driveway there's a slant i was like hey baby let me help her up so i grab her she's holding me she's like you're so kind my my daughter usually helps me but we haven't spoken weeks and then so <laughs> So let me try to make this quick, guys. So we're in the front of her uh, garage, and this is the night where it's, it's getting a little stormy. It's the it's like clouds are purple, okay, guys? A little yeah. storm is about to kick in with some wind, some lightning, some rain, all right? And so if you know any type of old people, there's two types of old people. There's old people who are just grumpy, like really don't like to talk, and then there's old people like the old people off movies where they can talk 
and talk about their whole family, talk about their whole life story, and you cannot get out of it. <laughs> her mental clarity at 92 years old was so on point. Her words, everything, her mind, her bit, like everything was there. She's like, I'm just old. And so I was like, okay, cool. And you know, she's talking, she's like, well, you know what? And I was like, shit. <laughs> so she starts telling me, you know, who she is, uh, the things, the drama that's happening with her, her daughter, who's also 65 years old. And I'm like, you know, just being a great, like a great person and listening. All right. I, I'm, you know, she's old. She don't have nobody to talk to. I'm just listening. And then she sees my cross on my chest and she's like, are you religious? And I was all like, yeah, I, I go to church. I listen to church. And she's all like, well, I got a problem. I was like, shit. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. I was like, hey, what's going on? And she's like, well, he's been taking things from me for the past five years and I can't get him to stop. I take this thing there and it turns up missing. I actually fired so much help because I thought they were stealing from me. And it turns out it was him the entire time. And I was all like, yo, I was like, wait, who's him? Like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> That's all I that was all I'm thinking. I was like, stop. I was like, um, who's him? She's all like, well, it's a Catholic thing. And uh, you know, he he's like a possession in your house. And you know, oh. the priest told me I need to do an exorcism because he's watching us right now. And, God um, dang. <laughs> y'all, y'all know me. I don't watch demon shit. That's not what I do because I had once a long time ago sleep paralysis. Don't Google that shit because you'll get it. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, right. it, was, it was, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh shit, like I gotta go. So I'm the baby's crying. I'm like, perfect. This is a good exit point. And I was all like, um, I was like, oh man, you know what? I'm so sorry. Um, all this kind of good stuff. I was like, hey. You can do fine. You want some help to to the to the to your door, right? Let me help you to your door. I don't want you, you know, falling. The baby's crying. I gotta head out. She's like, oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I help her to the back of her garage, okay, guys. And there's a recliner there, and she's like, well, before you leave, um, I got some trail mix for you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. So instead of getting trail mix, she sits down in this recliner. Desi just leaves now because it's storming. Like it's, it's purple. The clouds are dark. It's windy, and there's some drizzle. And there's lightning. All right. So the perfect storm's coming. And so this lady sits down in this recliner. She had a robe on and she unlooses it. Oh, shoot. I was all like, bro, like, <laughs> in my You're head. You're all hot and <laughs> No, in my, like, don't forget, picture this woman as the perfect, you know, horror old women, woman, guys. All right. Ugh. And in the back of my head, when she's talking to me, all I could think about somebody slicing my ankles up, dog, from underneath the car. Like, literally, that's where my mind's at. So I'm like tapping. I'm looking for my phone. I don't even got my phone. My wife left. And then she goes back and starts talking about this thing. Right. And I'm like, fuck, you know, why we got to go back to this conversation? <laughs> and then we go deep in the conversation. She exits out of the conversation. She rambles on something and she enters back in the conversation. And I'm like, all right, she's going on and the fucking lights turn off in the garage, right? Because, you know, they only stay on for a long time. Now we're in pitch dark. It's storming. She's continuing talking about him and how she needs help getting rid of him. And if I know anybody that could come and do a freaking exorcist. Oh, in her house, and I was all like trying to exit, bro. Every time I try to exit, she pull my ass back in. And I'm like, shoot, bro. And then she's like, I call the sheriff. She's like, can I get your card? She's like, you know what? Come inside. Come inside. Let me get your number. And I'm oh, like, no. I fucking, like the whole time I knew, I knew she was trying to get me to go inside, brother. I was like, I'm not going inside. Like, that's where I stand. I'm not going to stop. You could chop me up, lady. Like, that is not happening. Uh, no. I'll throw a punch you right now. And run off. Like, God, don't make me do it to you. Don't make me do it. And I was like, hey, I was like, you know what? Listen. You know, Sunday, I'll come back. I'll drop off my business card. Like, I really got to go. Like, I, I got to go. And so I'm like walking back. She's like, I won't bug you. I promise. And I was like, I burned off, bro. I was out. I, I, she uh, gave me the trail mix in my hand. And as I was running, I threw him over somebody's fence. I was like, I don't want nothing to do with <laughs> you, brother. Oh, dude, that sounds like a horrible story, dude. <laughs> uh, I was at night, dog. The weather was perfect. It got pitch dark. She was the perfect you know, horror person. Dude, she was trying to kill you, bro. She was trying to get you to the house. I was going to get murdered, homie. Swear Damn. to God. I was going to get jumped in there. Oh, oh, let me turn my light on brighter. Give me a second. There yeah. was going to be razor to the top. <laughs> like, that's what my mind was. She's going to get me to go inside. I ain't doing it. Whew. Don't I ever walk past bro. that house again. I Avoid told her. That. That. 
don't fucking take the kids over there. I don't want you yeah. to go over there. Don't go over there. Hey, what are y'all going to go missing one of these days? <laughs> At least I told y'all, fool. He's around the corner. Uh, no, it is recorded, right? Yeah, we know. <laughs> hey, what's the address? That's good. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was gonna say, go find out the address. So, just in case yeah, you're not missing, we know where to look. <laughs> I, I get hot and bothered. Though. I'm sweating now, thinking about. It. I almost fucking. Oh, bro, you, I got to chills when you first. I'm like, nope. Mm-mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start saying some Hail Marys tonight, dude. No it's thanks. Like a movie, she right? Took, it's like almost took off her robe. She's like, "This is it," <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god!" But yeah, man, let's jump. Yeah. Almost died, At bro. least he didn't turn into a demon right in front of your eyes. Oh, I, mean. <laughs> I would have went to jail for beating up an old lady, bro. That's <laughs> you're gonna be like telling the cops she was a demon. Yeah, she I was. Swear. A demon. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I would not beat up an old lady. Go to prison. As you were telling that story, it just reminded me of this lady that used to live like way down my street. Like when I was, I don't know how old I was at this point. Maybe like eight, nine years old. Uh, one like my babysitter at the time uh lived a uh, right up the street like maybe like 20 30 houses down and there on our street there was like a historical like cemetery and then right next to it was this creepy ass house like it looked like like something you'd like something you'd see in a movie like you're talking about like like run down it had like gargoyle i think it had like gargoyles on it and shit yeah and uh <laughs> and then every time you would see the lady come out it looked like she had no eyes it just looked like black oh, black oh jesus and it's like she had like the like long messy gray like just grayed out like hair she was always wearing either black or like dark gray wow. like dresses and she lived right next to the cemetery. And like, as a kid, like me and my brother and like my babysitter's kids also, we were like, that is, she's a witch. Like yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's no if <laughs> and or but like she was a witch and like, we never wanted to get close to her like at all. Like, I mean, she was maybe like three, four houses down, but like diagonally from our house. But every time she would step out into the front yard we're like, no, nope. she just gave us the chills, man. No nope. hard pass. Nuts, mm-hmm. man. All right, guys. Well, hope you enjoy the story. Or if you did, I hope you fast forward that bad boy. <laughs> mm. So it is time for some development, guys. This is a goodie. This is the one that you know made this whole team get together because we had our focus on the wrong things. And so, guys, we're gonna talk about working on your business versus working in your business. And essentially, guys, if you're stuck, right, if you're stuck, you're not seeing progress in your life, your personal life, your your business, or whatever kind of goals you're at, and you're, you know, you're sick of it, and you want to make a change, and you you probably are doing all the right things, and maybe all the right things potentially could not be the right things, because you don't know the difference between on and in, and it's a big difference, and it's time to learn the two differences. So off the bat, guys, do y'all, when I uh, introduced the topic, did y'all understand what that meant? Did y'all, have y'all ever heard of that concept? Because I mean, I hadn't really heard of the concept, but but it like I mean, I kind of can put the two together. Like you're smart, uh, it, college boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but I, I can see where a lot of people can misinterpret one for the other. Now, in the CG world, you're surrounded by high level leaders and. Uh, I remember a leader telling me this and I really didn't grasp the concept like you did. I was like, Oh, on and in. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it really did. Being, un- unfortunately, I didn't grab the nugget at the time, which could have been beneficial at the time. And um, until I listened to a podcast and they reintroduced it and then there was more why meaning behind it. And I was like, Oh, we need to like, this is game changer. I wish like that leader slipped up a little bit without telling me the whole backstory because that could have came in handy. All right, so what's the difference, guys? Working in, working on your business versus in your business, what does that even mean? Man, I think uh, I think the two things can can. It's hard to tell the difference if you're not like fully aware of what's going on. But I think working in uh, your business, you just pretty much just on on autopilot. You're just kind of going through the operations of your business, whatever it is, whatever your business that you're working on is, you just, you're you're doing like the quote unquote work, but like Jonathan was saying that you're kind of stuck, like nothing's really moving forward. You're not really going backwards either. You're just kind of like day to day 
um, kind of getting through. Um, but the whole point of one first, you know, uh, the point of going into business, not to just stay stagnant, it's to grow. So when you're working on your business, then you're like really applying a lot more facets of entrepreneurship or like creativity. You're making an impact and difference on your business, not only just operating it, but now you're moving it forward. So working on your business, you're creating you know, like new stuff, new content, you're getting out there, getting your word out of your business, maybe, right? Uh, doing different things to make your business grow, how, whatever growth looks like for your business, where you're working on that. Um, so I think that's the two things. It's just one, you're just kind of going through the motions that's working in your business, but working on your business to really challenge yourself and doing things that will help your business move forward. Yeah, so working in your business is more like, doing the, the actual work, the day-to-day -day stuff, um, the stuff that bigger businesses hire other people to do. Um, when you're working on your business, you're, you're coming up with a strategy. You're being, you're doing, you're, you're being more of a leader. You're delegating to other people. Um, I was kind of thinking about it. Like when the first, when the topic first got brought up and I was trying to think of ways to make it like more tangible. And when I think of, working in your business, I think of someone that's self-employed. So like they, they own their own business, but they're doing all the work. They're like, you might own, say, I mean, I'm Middle Eastern, so I'll say you own a liquor store. <laughs> uh, but you're <laughs> <laughs> whoa, stereotypes 100 <laughs> percent hey, it's true. There's, Jesus. A, reason. there's a reason. He could say it. Yeah, but I so like it. Without a cut and edit that bad boy out. <laughs> but yeah, so like most most of these people that own these liquor stores, they're working 16, 18 hours a day. Like my dad's cousin had a, had like a liquor store, like a little convenience store, and he was never home. He was always he was always at I mean at work. So like when you're working in your business, you're still an employee. You're just an employee to yourself. Oh, whereas, no. yeah, whereas like when you're working on your business, you may have been working in your business for a while, but you've gone to a certain level where you need to expand, but you, you can't know. do it on your own. You're yeah, you need the help. Baby. Yeah. So, yeah. So now you, you're coming up with new ideas on either opening a new, another location or making it more effective and making it more profitable. Um, just things like that. Like you just need to. It's really about growing and developing the business and not focusing on on re restocking the shelves or yeah. or whatever so, or being at the cash register on your business is bigger picture stuff bigger vision stuff right something that you're mm -hmm. going to be doing that doesn't benefit you today but maybe in two to three years bigger picture stuff and how do we create systems and processes to actually do that type of work versus like you said, guys, when you're in your business doing the day-to-day -day operations, you're doing all the stuff that catches fire, right? You're answering phone calls, you're, you're freaking writing emails, you're freaking whatever business you're in. Now, I want to go because I want to be able to impact people who just aren't entrepreneurs and also people who have an eight to five because I believe the same concept applies. Like whether you're an eight to five or you, or you have your own business and you're, you're having to learn the hard way like I did of knowing the difference, I believe this can impact those to eight to five because if you're tired, obviously, if you want self development, you want some growth, right? You want growth somewhere. And say you want that promotion, say you want that promotion, or you're trying to level up in somewhere in your life and you don't understand what to do because you're just doing the day to day stuff, right? Your job requires X, Y, and Z, and you do X, Y, and Z to the highest level. Great. And you're expecting to get to that next promotion. But in actuality, and able to get to that next promotion, you need to take a step back, get that bird's eye view of the whole thing here. What is that guy that is in your pr promotion, the guy that you want to do what he wants to do? What is he actually doing? And then you start doing that. That's You're not getting paid for that, but you are now learning those skills. You're actually investing time in yourself to actually get those skills together. So you are inadvertently preparing yourself for that next phase. And I think the difference is the day-to-day -day stuff, guys, that working in your business is immediate gratification, right? Answering a text, shooting an email, solving a problem. Now, all that stuff is like day-to-day -day instant gratification and where that working on your business is that delayed 
gratification. It's going to take time to foresee. You're going to take systems. You're going to take a process. You know, you're going to have to build something to be, get something else. And so can y'all agree? Is it, you know, is it just entrepreneurship and business or can this be applied? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's no, definitely for sure. Oh, go ahead. And be applied. I, sorry, Vic. It just you mentioned eight to five. Like it, it applies to my job as a sales role, right? So if I'm just working in my business, um, how I kind of describe it to when I help mentor new people to the team is that's a lot of the the reactive stuff. It's like just stuff coming in that you're reacting to it. Oh, Whereas the yeah. business that's really won and, and taken from is the 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 um I just First lost response. my train of thought. Um yeah, not reactive, yeah. but uh First yeah. Uh, what the hell is it called? All right, take all this out. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus. No, I can't think of the word. Oh, man. It's like, like a P. Like, oh, wait, it's a P word. Really uh, right now. <laughs> it's a P word. Damn, I, was, I felt straight flames coming out. But yeah, like, I, know, I working was like in, ready for the punchline. I was working like, oh. in is, um, uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Proactive. So a lot of stuff is reactive, like working in your business, working on your business, a lot of proactive things. So, like, when it comes to sales, you have like your retention customers, like people you know are going to buy. But that's not going to win you like the 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 market percentage of whatever the product you're selling. The the proactive stuff is going to get you the acquisition customers, those people that don't buy your product, they go to a competitor. So I feel like in eight to five it applies there, but also from an entrepreneur uh, type business that you own. I mean, we'll use Camp Gladiator for an ex example. Like you're trying to get people that don't use CG. It could be Golds, it could be Crunch, it can be you know Planet Fitness or whatever. Um, so it definitely applies to jobs that aren't considered as entrepreneur. There you go. And that's what I want to make sure that everyone understands that it, when we say on and in your business, it could be insert instead of business, you can put life, right? You can put life working in your life versus working on your life, two different things. All right. So just want to make sure that if you're listening to the car, you still need to li listen to this because it's still very impactful knowing the difference. Now we know the difference guys. I think Ian and Chris, I mean, Ian and Victor didn't know the difference until now. Um, now looking at it, do y'all have any stories where you understand the concept that it's, it's, ha it's actually happened in your life where you inadvertently didn't know what you were doing, but you did it and you got an outcome because you just started thinking on versus in. Right off the bat, I'm not thinking about myself, but I'm kind of like when uh, Ian mentioned CG, I was kind of thinking of the two of you. So like, Vic is earlier on in as a franchise owner and he, I feel like he might still be in the working in his business portion of it. And now, I mean, you've been doing this for like what, five years about, five um, half, brother, come on, five and a half. Uh, and you kind it. of leveled up and you're like working on getting up into the leadership role. Now I feel like you're more working on your business instead of working in it as much as you were in the past. So yeah, they're, they're perfect. Perfect example as beginning entrepreneur. I think every entrepreneur, unless you got, you know, high level coaches surrounding at, at the beginning of your phase, um, we didn't at the time. Um, so yeah, I became an entrepreneur. I owned a franchise and off the bat, I was in my business. I was just doing the day-to-day -day operations, training camp, answering text. And after about eight months of just doing the day-to-day, -day, I wasn't seeing any growth and I almost had to quit. I just didn't understand it. I was like, yo, what's going on? You know, why I'm not seeing the results. And then, you know, with being surrounded by, you know, high level people that are willing to mentor you, like it's super important you surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. Like it's, it's a game changer. Get around some people, learn some small talk. <laughs> let's get to learning. So it really changed when I started working on my business is when I took my stuff out of the employee role, because I was just being an employee to myself. Chris said it best. When you're working as a day-to-day -day in your business, you're an employee to yourself and you're not going to see growth, right? You're not going to see that growth that you want to see. You may see a little growth. It just may be on accident, but um, you want to see huge growth. As a business owner, you don't want to just do, do what you want to do to, and barely survive, barely make a living. Like you're jumping to entrepreneurship because you want to live life in abundance, have uh, that time and financial freedom, right? Because that's the opportunity you can create. You can literally give yourself those opportunities, and so when I shifted and I started taking a step back and had the bird's eye view, I realized real fast that Jonathan, you doing everything on yourself is almost an ego thing. It's almost a bragging right that I'm doing all this on myself, but I'm losing. So I don't know in actuality what I'm really bragging about. 
And so I, you know, I shifted gears. I was like, yo, what's, what can I be doing? And so I started investing into myself, right? So when you invest in yourself, you don't get something back in immediate return, right? You start honing on different skills and learning how to delegate. And at the time I was like, all right, I surrounded myself with leaders. I want to know what they're doing because I know they're not working harder than me in the day to day, but they're doing something else that's seeing way much more growth. And that's what I was like, yo, I want in on that. What are y'all doing? They took a step back. They analyzed their struggles. They became more strategic with their actions and they actually led through other people, right? You started, you started learning how to delegate, automate, and, you know, conserve your energy and really maximize on the bigger picture stuff, right? And fortunately, guys, we talk about knowing your strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, one of my strengths, unfortunately, just happens to be vision. Somehow I was just gifted to have this big vision and God placed this in my hands and the next that everything's kind of lined itself up when you start investing in yourself, because now I'm surrounded by freaking amazing individuals, Ian, Chris, and Victor that are, you know, on this same team with me and helping me out. So I was able to take some caps off, you know, I want to go into, yes, CG is a start of in your business. And then you're transferring how to work on your business. Eventually guys, you want to transition all the way into on your business, right? You really want to be effective with your time. And so we took the same concept and we are trying to apply it to our podcast because literally it's a business. Ultimately, we want to impact as many people as possible. And we can't do that if we're not leveling up. For the longest time, we just did the podcast every week, did our research, did the podcast, did our research, and nothing was really happening. Yes, we had growth internally, but as far as treating this like a business, we're not really impacting people. Nobody's listening. Our numbers are actually going down. And so it's time to take a step back. Let's give each other roles, right? We all can't do the exact same thing. We all have gifts. And so Ian really took charge of his role of the social media aspect of it. And so Ian, I want to, I want to let you talk and speak about it is when we got, we, when we did the meeting, we analyzed our roles and we started to focus on strategies on how we can grow the podcast. And what you did recently is kind of 200% growth on views. You know, what made you want to do that? What made you like, that's not the Ian I know. The Ian I know, unfortunately, you just kind of did what was asked, right? We, we really didn't do anything extra. I'm going to be straight up with you because I think friends should be really straightforward, especially you want to see growth. Um, you kind of did this on your own. <laughs> and so what, like, how did that transpire, bro? Uh, I don't know. I just got tired of not doing what I'm good at, I guess. I've, I've always felt like I, I, I keep telling my wife, you know, there's a lot of creative things that I want to get good at in life. Like one thing being guitar, playing piano or learning to paint or getting good at like the Adobe suite. Um, but wanting doesn't get you shit. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just finally used the tools that I have, which, which, which was social media in itself. Uh, looked at some other influencers, how good they are. Um, but yeah, just the main reason I wanted to do something, I was just tired of not doing something. So I did it. What do you have to say about that? Dude, that's a perfect, I think, um, description of how people feel, I think. Get, you're tired of X, right? I think we've all been there. I think it, 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 it would feel like a broken record, but it's true. Like, there's always, like, that decision where you're, like, you're tired of something, and then you make a change, or you make a different decision to do something different or better. So We just um, talked about it. Yeah. yeah. Having the back against the wall, having that decision, being sick and tired of being sick and tired is definitely one of those decisions. Something needs to change. Yeah. And, and I, I, think, I mean, and, yeah, go oh, good. No, you're good. No, so I was going to say, and, and I think it's even worse when, you know, you have a certain gift or skill, but you don't act on it. Like oh. you, you have, you know, you have talent to do something, but you're too scared or you're too like um undecisive or undecided to take that step forward even though you have everything you like you don't even need any money or anything. you have your own talent that can make things happen because you have it in you you know you can but that like you know it's something stopping you from, from not going I, I think that's that's even worse like you're tired you're sick and tired but then you're too scared to act on it but you know you have all the skills and gifts to do it <laughs> i was waiting for this ian brother like fucking and, and, waiting yeah, when was good. this gonna fucking come out right and I feel like that's uh, that's why a lot of people get into like starting their own companies or like their small business. The only problem is with a lot of these small business owners, it, just to get back onto the topic a little bit, is they tend to 
like we were saying, they would they work in their business so much that they neglect working on their business. And then so they so they tend to they tend to put that to the side and it just never and then they just kind of forget about it. And they're just so focused. It becomes routine. Like uh, like Vic was talking about earlier that they get lost in translation and like they don't they they forget the reason why they started the business. They wanted more time. They wanted to work for themselves. They didn't want to answer to anyone else. But now they're stuck working those 16, 18 hour days instead of doing what they initially started that business for was to have more time or more money to spend with your with your friends and family and and unfortunately like you see that all the time and to it what are the extra strategies what like okay everyone obviously at some point is in this position right here whether they be sick and tired of being at work or whether they're doing their own thing and like you said they're just doing all the busy work and not really focus on work transitioning to working on your business where they can essentially do exactly what they thought they were going to do but they got lost in the sauce of just doing busy work how do we what are some strategies to utilize to make the shift and it's not just one shift at a time is it how can you make the promotion right we basically that's what the podcast name is how can you give yourself that ceo promotion i mean i think you just got to analyze where your business is i think from like if i own my own be like everything was mine uh, you, you got to analyze your market. Like what is what in what in your comp- competition, you gotta, you gotta know what's going to set you off differently from your comp. Say if I'm selling coffee and then there's another person there across the street that's selling coffee, what's going to make a customer come to me versus going to come to over there. Right. So then you got to make a kind of think of some sort of strategy is going to attract a business. You can't just open a coffee shop and just hope and just, just having a sign up that people are going to come. You got to make yourself, you know, kind of shine apart from everyone else. That's not how and entrepreneurship that, works. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just like, no, nah, just like, <laughs> well, I mean, because some people just think that, look, well, I'm just going to pop something open and people are going to fucking yeah. come because my product's good. Yes. And I, and I think, I don't know if I heard it through one of our uh, seminars that we took from CG or somewhere. It, it, it's just that, like, you can have the best product in the world, but if you don't know how to, uh, marketed or bring attention to it or, or bring right people in to try it doesn't do no good yeah um and so same thing with us like i can have the best workout program in the world but if no one shows up <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter right if no one yeah. comes to actually experience it nothing matters um so I, I i think um that's the difference i think from like if you're you know doing your own business or thinking about doing your own business really set a plan in place that's going to make you different from someone else right starbucks right is a very good example they sell coffee i mean plain and simple right but when you walk in it's an experience you walk in it's like you feel good that you're, you feel different than if you went to dunkin donuts you know <laughs> no, um true. um so it, so there's a difference there there's a difference to to like the madness when you walk in you feel a certain way like the the design of the place the way it is the smell everything is to the T of what they want you to experience. It was going to keep you coming back. And that's why they're freaking the goats of coffee right now. Right. Um, so I think that's, that's the thing. I think it's gonna, and it, I guess it's not very specific. It's very like broad, but like think of something, right. That can uh, set you apart is the word from like a, a competition, right. Whatever business you're in. Um so the strategy think, you're saying is getting yeah. creative with setting yourself apart. You're having some creative yeah. ideas to make you different. Chris. Uh, yes. What's yeah. up? Uh, so you had mentioned ego earlier. Yeah. So a lot of people, they're afraid to have other people do things because they feel like they can't do it as well as them. And it might, it may be true, but at the same time, if you're trying to grow, you need to tr- put your trust into someone else. You need to train them well enough where they can be at least competent to do that. And even if you do hire someone, you need to make sure you're not micromanaging them because then you're just doing extra work as well. Because instead of just letting them do their, their job and focusing on the other, on the creativity or the strategy, like Vic was just talking about, they're still just watching over them. And then it's like, they're, it's, it's kind of like 
pointless to hire someone because you're like, then, then why did you even hire anyone if you're just gonna ha like just watch them the whole time and just make them redo things or like yeah. focus on on the wrong things? You hit a good point, brother. Uh, that's one of the toughest parts of exiting out into the day to day and going into your CEO because you have to allow other people to work. And Gary V said it best, brother. Um, he he preaches about this, guys. He's like, listen, every CEO wants their employees to care as much as they do. It's never going to fucking happen. It is not their baby for them to care like that. Right. And so the no, fuck no, they're not going to give 120 percent like you would. And it, no, it's not going to be as perfect as you would do it. But if you have that mindset, you're you're going to hold yourself back tremendously when the whole point of your business is to grow. So the 80 20 rule does apply if they could do 80 percent of it kind of okay and 20 percent of it kind of fucked up that's a win for you brother because now you can dial back and the job is still going to get done at a that high level not the highest level as you but still going to get done right at a better level and so that's a huge point is that was anybody going into leadership that's the toughest thing to do is to let go you want to lead people and then you want them to do exactly what you're going to do and then you start micromanaging or you start rubbing people the wrong way because it's not being done the way you want it to be done. And that's just not leadership. And it's hard to let that go too, especially if you're a little OCD or you're like, yeah. like you, cause you, you like things done a certain way. And if someone does it a different way, but it still gets done, it can throw you off because you you're used to doing it a certain way and you want everyone else to do it that way. But sometimes you just need to sit back let let them do what they're doing and as long as you get the results i mean it it doesn't really matter there you go brother so that's that's a strategy number two guys so first strategy is get creative get some ideas for me. let's separate yourself the second strategy is the ego leave that shit to the side nobody gives a fuck how much hard how much hard work you're doing if you're not if you're not growing if you're not growing why are you why are you acting tough right why are you trying to stunt on somebody it doesn't make any sense we want to see growth we want to see you be able to win Everybody wants to see you win, brother. So let go of the ego. Let people lead people with kindness and empathy. And, and as long as they get that job done and you are saving time so you can focus on big picture stuff, that's what you need to focus your time on. Um, strategy number three, guys, is I believe this is kind of be it's super important to understand is obviously delegating and automating and making processes and systems. And I know not everybody starting a business or you know trying to do their own thing has a team, right? And so- you do have to be in your business, working in your business until you can wing yourself out. Um, not at, you're not going to be, you know, some guy coming off the block, having a hundred of people to work for, and then you can now delegate everything off unless you come from like, fine. So we're speaking to people who are trying to live their best dream. So right now you're hopefully not living your best, or hopefully you are living your best dream. <laughs> I ain't trying to speak down on you, but if you're listening to this guys, you're probably not trying to be on the come up like us, right? Where, you're, you're bringing things together right now. And what I'm trying to tell you is, yes, we're saying that you should not be working in your business. You should be focused on, but there is a start. You do have to wear all the hats, unfortunately, at the beginning because you don't have the resources. But as you get the momentum going, you start letting go of that ego and you start learning to impact and lead and you start building a team. How do you build a team? You just love on people and you inspire people to, and you, 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 uh, you show them your vision and you just be you and they will follow guys. If you have a bigger impact mission and a vision, they'll, they'll come, all right? You just gotta be a good person, shit. I'm a terrible person, but somehow they still come. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, strategy number three would be obviously is knowing that yes, there is a starting base and you are trying to transition out. And there's one more, unless y'all have one, it's a big one. We kind of talked about it on a podcast, a couple of podcasts ago, and I wasn't on that one. Ah, I'm trying to remember which one. Interesting. That was. <laughs> Multiplying your time. So every CEO understands multiplying your time. What do I mean by that, guys? Is you're doing activities that are going to benefit you from years from now, six months from now. It's that delayed gratification that's you creating processes and systems. When I started Jay's Fitness Grind, which is a little nutrition, you know, uh, course, three month course, four month course. I had to figure out how do I sign people up? <laughs> what software do I use? How do I, how do I receive money? Um, how do I receive, how do I give them emails? How, what systems, what templates? Like there has to be some kind of like stuff that I wasn't getting paid for, but I was having to sit down and create a whole flow, workflow. 
And I was not getting paid immediately for it, but I, I was in that creation mode. It's Jay's Fitness Grind. I was in creating, I was in ideas. And because of all that, it turned into Jay's Fitness Grind, which literally, you know, for a couple of months, like doing some giant cash flow for me. And it was phenomenal. And it was amazing to see that maybe like a whole week's worth of work of like digging in, investing my time in creating something from the bottom to scratch and really seeing it through, and like it paid off tenfold that's how you turn yourself into a CEO is you start thinking and strategizing and being creative and working on shit now that's not going to get you returned until later 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 guys this is CEO stuff later later not right now right now though not right now right now <laughs> you can go day to day dude right now right now and get that awesome I work hard bullshit but unfortunately I think the less you work and the more gain you get I think that's more of a that's more of a win guys ultimately that's where we want to be at I do have one more, um, one more thing to improve your business. Let's go. And, and that's investing in yourself. Cause if, if, if you don't invest, if you're not, if you're, your business won't grow unless you grow as well. So whether that's listening like we, like we're doing here, yeah, you're listening to podcasts, well, listen, bro, shit. like the Dudality podcast, uh, <laughs> or, um, reading self development books or going to seminars based on that business that you're in or just different workshops. Like there's so many different things you can do. And a lot, a lot of it doesn't even cost a lot of money. Um, some of them, some, sometimes it does. Sometimes you're spending a lot of money on yourself to improve your business. But, but you, I mean, that is a huge thing. Cause like I said, like if you don't grow yourself, your business is not going to grow. Love it, brother. You got anything else, man? I think that was good. Gold, yeah. I liked it. You almost got us some fire in. Dog, it was it was <laughs> coming out us, like you almost gave us a KO. Hey, it happened uh, to me a lot. Like, like I hit the jab, the jab, but then I the hook yeah, got stuck. Your, your game froze. Like, <laughs> I, was, it's, it's, I would totally just lose my whole train of thought. And I'm like, shit. Got Dog, that. my controller died mid fight. <laughs> uh, that sucked. If yeah, but uh. That was good stuff. What are the we got any tangibles? Do we did I miss that or oh, we, did, we did the steps and strategies to get yourself out of the um employee and get yourself into a CEO? It's a transition, definitely. Nice. Okay. I don't have a quote to be honest. I really couldn't find one that applied. So if you have one, throw it out there. If not, Man, I mean, well, I, what, I what, what, we used a quote. One. Uh Chris, what did Chris say? No. What did Chris say? No, was it was it Ian? It was Chris, and it was uh when you work. For yourself, you're still an employee or something like that. Yeah, yeah, don't something different. like that. It hit different. <laughs> yeah, that was good. You were uh, rolling too, different. man. Ian was <laughs> rolling today. Damn. <laughs> but all right, y'all. I had a I had a quote, but I, yeah, I can't find it anymore. Fuck it. Hey, no. Leave but, us uh, what Ian always says. No, not yet. I mean, I always oh. forget. I want to add though. We do. Uh, however, you listen to us, you know. Obviously, we appreciate the support. Uh, but we uh, we do have a YouTube channel, so if you want to see our beautiful faces, uh, you can always watch the podcast in that format. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Um, we also have social medias, uh, Instagram, we're on Facebook, Twitter. We actually have a TikTok. We haven't done any dances yet, but we might get in there here pretty soon. But if you could all wow. you know drop a follow, uh, leave a comment, uh, <laughs> just letting us know your thoughts. Uh, you know, we'd always say appreciate it. But uh, you're born to be great. Let's go and do it. Uh, as always till next time peace and love